वेलकम लेट्स स्टार्ट विद आर नेक्स्ट यूनिट फॉर द रिविजन कोर्स एंड दिस इज ऑन पीपल एंड एनवायरमेंट अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक इन डीड नाउ इफ यू लुक ऑन टू द सिलेबस मोस्ट ऑफ द टॉपिक्स रिमेन द सेम एज द प्रीवियस ईयर्स क्वेश्चन पेपर्स और द सिलेबस देर आर फ्यू चेंजेस विच आर हियर एंड दोज आर मेनली एज द नेशनल एक्शन प्लान ऑन क्लाइमेट चेंज द एनवायरमेंटल प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट सो दीज आर सम ऑफ द मेजर टॉपिक्स दैट यू वुड हैव टू फोकस ऑन सो लेट्स बिगिन विद द वेरी फंडामेंटल्स एंड दैट्स द बेसिक्स ऑफ जोग्राफी सो टॉकिंग अबाउट इंडिया जोग्राफी इफ यू रेफर द एन सी आर टी टेंथ यू वुड हैव द बेसिक्स ऑफ इंडिया जोग्राफी इन सिक्स और सेवन चैप्टर्स एंड दोज वीडियोज आर सफिशियंट फॉर यू टू कवर द क्लाइमेट जियोमोफोलॉजी ट्रांसपोर्ट इंडस्ट्री माइनिंग एग्रीकल्चर एंड सो ऑन सो वेरी फंडामेंटल इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट द इंडिया द कंट्री इंडिया देन यू हैव द एनवायरमेंटल इशूज सो यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज इकोलॉजी इको सिस्टम डिफरेंसिस बिटवीन इकोलॉजी एंड इको सिस्टम हैव बीन कवर्ड इन अ सेपरेट वीडियो then we talk about succession how one species is taken over by the other species and ultimately a uh, civilization or the uh, species reaches a point where they can maximum survive so that is what is the climax you have the energy flow that is from the sun what is energy is absorbed is just 1% with each successive level there is 10% energy transfer that is seen you also have the concept of food chain and food web which have been talked about in separate short videos so you can cover that the idea is let's say you have plants being eaten by a grasshopper grasshopper being eaten by a bigger insect and finally by by a snake so this is a food chain but if this grasshopper is being eaten by multiple organisms which are being further eaten by multiple organisms it forms a web which is known as food web the next is the biotic and the abiotic component biotic are the living components so flora and fauna the plants the animals all constitute the biotic atmosphere the biotic element however under abiotic we talk about non living things so temperature climate humidity precipitation all those are abiotic we also have the habitat the place where an organism lives and niche is the interaction with the surroundings with every successive trophic level so each trophic level you have the amount of uh, the hazardous material which add up and this is what is known as bioaccumulation a good example of bioaccumulation is ddt which has been banned in america since 1972 which has led to thinning of the shells of pelican uh, bird so thinning uh, thin, thinning of the egg shells of the pelican birds uh, caused by accumulation of ddt so at every trophic level the concentration of ddt increases in the body uh, similarly you have various kind of associations between the organisms mutualism commensalism and uh, amenalism the idea is whether both of them are getting benefited whether one is getting benefited the other is getting harm similarly we talk about population growth whether it is exponential it is a j shaped curve s s shaped curve we talk about the carrying capacity that's a maximum number of uh, people or persons that could be uh, basically uh, that could survive in a region or that could uh, thrive in a area so let's say this region is sufficient for 100 people if 10000 people are asked to stay in this area what would happen there would be shortage of water uh, infrastructure housing everything would go worse so that's the carrying capacity the maximum number of individuals that a region can hold uh, this with this we talk about the cycle so the carbon cycle oxygen cycle nitrogen cycle all these cycles become water cycle all these cycles are important we also talk about modifications to the climate acclimatization to the climatic conditions how well you are adapted to the climatic conditions then you have the various types of pollutions it could be based on the spatial basis so it could be uh, local national global it could be situational it could be based on visibility uh, could be based on the source or uh, the area from where the pollution is coming so it could be visible in nature invisible in nature so some of the pollutants are visible you can obviously see those the others are not visible similarly air quality index is important you have five major components that we talk about under air quality index that's carbon dioxide uh, sorry carbon monoxide carbon dioxide is not considered a major parameter under the aqi the air quality index so you have carbon monoxide sulfur dioxide nitrogen dioxide particulate matter and ground level ozone now this sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide when reacts with water form sulfuric acid and nitric acid now these sulfuric acid and nitric acid uh 
basically leads to yellowing of the building. So Taj Mahal, the yellowing of the Taj Mahal is due to the uh, the extracts being sent through the Mathura oil refinery and the acid rain. So this when falls onto the earth, it occurs as an acid rain. Ground level, if the ozone is present, it acts as a pollutant. But if it is in the stratosphere, it prevents the ultraviolet uh, rays from reaching into the earth and is considered useful. So very, very important the role of ozone changes. The ozone concentration is measured through Dobson units. So again, important. We talk about the greenhouse effect. With the greenhouse effect, you have the global warming. That's the temperature of the earth rising up. We believe this should not go beyond the pre-industrial level, not more than 1.5 degrees Celsius. Now, we focus on the thinning of the ozone layer that's caused by CFC, the chlorofluorocarbons, mainly found in refrigerators, air conditioners, and under this ozone protection, you have the Montreal Protocol that came in. For the global warming and greenhouse effect, you had the Kyoto Protocol that came in. So all these protocols are regulations basically uh, talking about much more environmental issues, bringing in environmental concerns. So we have a video where we have talked about 30 environmental con uh, conventions, and that's really really interesting to understand how these work on uh, acid rain we already discussed indoor air pollution a very major a burgeoning topic we could say uh, you have the volatile organic compounds questions on those the major indoor air pollutants the greenhouse gas emitters uh, so all these are some of the major topics that you need to know similarly you have the 1983's Brutland Commission report the Rio de Janeiro summit uh, the conference uh, the earth summit that we call as the 19 92 summit that's important you have the Tbilisi declaration that's important so these all have been discussed in the class on 30 conventions on environment we have also covered one class on uh, carbon trading Kyoto protocol so within the exam race channel you can just search in the playlist and find all these videos Another class which is very very important is on ozone. So these are some of the major topics that you would have to go through. Then we talk about the natural calamities. So volcano, earthquake, plate tectonics. Uh, then we focus on the tsunamis, the impact of tsunamis, the Andaman tsunami in 2004. We talk about cyclone. Recently you had cyclone Fani that hit the coast of Orissa. So the impact, the disasters that are caused by this are all important. Volcano, you had Mount Agong recently which erupted. So uh, the recent eruptions become important. Moi, you have a continuous, uh, in the Hawaii Islands, you have the Hilakia, which is continuously erupting since last few months so that's important so these kinds of developments can be part of your question paper so all these topics we have separate videos which you can watch on then soil erosion deforestation climate change so i believe all the topics of this people and environment we have videos on each of these topics separately now soil erosion a very important topic with deforestation the rate of soil erosion further enhances uh, climate change has been major concern as a result we have the national plan on climate change which becomes important similarly we have biodiversity how the biodiversity is being affected you have hot spots areas the biodiversity hot spots the hot spots of india mainly the western guards and the northeast part of india the uh, biodiversities which are at the verge of extinction so uh, endangered uh, vulnerable species are important to understand then iucn classification in c2 conservation that's within their uh, habitat x c2 is outside their habitat how do we conserve the species uh, ozone formation the cause and the consequences of those so all this are really really important when we talk about carbon trading you have uh, the carbon issues we have the kyoto protocol we have three important aspects so first is the issue of emission trading the second is clean development mission uh, mechanism and the third is joint implementation that could be seen by the nx1 and the non nx1 countries that's the industrialized and the developing countries so those are some of the uh, major issues that we discuss here then we have the phasing out of the pesticide for example methyl bromide that took place in 1995 which has led to severe depletion of the ozone layer national action plan on climate change very very important so you have eight missions which are part of it the first is the solar mission the next is the energy efficiency mission where you are aiming to increase the efficiency we are talking about a sustainable habitat for all so sustainable habitat 
water mission which aims at providing water ensuring integrated water resources that could be there uh, the next is very very interesting that is a special focus on the himalayan region so himalayan region is another important focus that we talk about we have the sustainable agriculture how agriculture can become sustainable and the major policies for the same mission on uh, climate change is another important aspect so a kind of sub part of this is a strategic knowledge for climate change and then green india so these are the eight missions which are part of the national action plan on climate change that is there and the last topic is a further important that is the international solar alliance now this is a collaboration of more than 121 nations coming across uh, the countries which are lying between the tropic of cancer and the tropic of capricorn you have the concept of global solar atlas that's important india has become the first country to have uh, international secretariat for the international solar alliance at gurgaon we have the kusum scheme which is krishi urja uh, suraksha uh, evam uthan maha abhiyan now this scheme basically talks about generation of uh, power through the solar solar systems at the farm level most of the power could be used by the farmer itself the remaining power could be sold to the discoms and that way the farmer can have additional source of income we are also focusing on international renewable energy alliance the sources of renewable energy in india the worldwide implications the worldwide sources and how uh, of the total 175 gigawatts of renewable energy that we talked we are focusing on 100 gigawatts of solar energy so that's the proportion that we are focusing on so these were some of the very key important topics that are most important for your uh, revision so focus on these topics and definitely from this section you have lots and lots of contemporary happening so stay tuned with the series on expected questions for your net examination have a wonderful day ahead